All right, hello everyone. It looks like we have about six o'clock U.S. Central time here. Um, thank you for joining us for, for those uh, that are streaming. Um, we, uh, we are members of the Catholic Boarding School Association and as members of, of the Catholic um, Boarding School and, and uh, the Catholic faith, let's start this, uh, this presentation um, with the prayer. Uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, um, we're going through a very challenging time in the world right now with COVID. We ask that you continue to guide us as we navigate the challenge of COVID-19 as we operate our schools. Um, we ask for your continued guidance as well as your support as we enter Catholic Schools Week. Um, we ask that you help our leaders of our schools um, navigate um, this challenge um, to the best of their abilities and, and under your guidance. For this we pray. Um, amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, so once again, thank you everyone for joining in. My name is Tom Alzusi. I'm the admissions director at Mount Michael Benedictine School, and I am a, uh, a member of the Catholic Boarding Schools Association. Um, for those of you, just to give you a little bit more background on the Catholic Boarding Schools, we are a, an association comprised of 15 member schools scattered across the United States. Um, on your screen right now, you'll see a map with, with all of the members that are currently on this call and where our schools are located. Um, so you can see that we are, are represented um, from coast to coast as well as in the Midwest here. So um, our schools, you know, pride themselves on, on being, you know, all over the United States as well as being very diverse school um, across the diverse schools across the entire world as well. So um, for you joining us, the purpose of this um, online forum is, is, of course, just to provide you. Um, with further information about what makes Catholic schools, specifically Catholic boarding schools, um, so unique, what are the benefits are of attending, and, and throughout the next course of this next hour, um, you're going to be learning just what those benefits are, whether it be from the benefits of, of going to school in the United States, the college prep academic aspect, but also, um, you know, some of the, the side effect aspects, you know, student life and what goes on during the, the weekends. Um, so with that being said, I'm just going to dive right in here into the presentation. And so I'll send it over to my friend um, at Flint Ridge Sacred Heart, Tracy. Thank you, Tom. Hi, everyone. My name is Tracy Howe, and I have the pleasure of serving as a director of admissions at Flint Ridge Secret Heart. Uh, we are located in Southern California in the city of La Cañada, Flint Ridge, which is about 23 kilometers from Los Angeles um, with easy access to city destinations, beaches, mountains, and the desert. Our students can have any type of experience that they dream of um, while still going to school, of course. Um, as an all-girls day in boarding high school, we welcome our students from all parts of the U.S., uh, but also from countries across the globe. Uh, our students are really at the center stage of an educational environment um, that makes it safe for them to learn, explore, um, and grow. As a school, we are dedicated to expanding opportunities for girls uh, to explore careers um, underrepresented by women. Uh, our girls are learning how to code, how to design apps, um, even before they start um, their university career. A signature program that we have uh, in our curriculum is a research program, which is a four-year uh, program that we, we have for all, for everybody. This was created um, to give our students an experience um, writing the types of papers that they will be asked to write as soon as they enter um, their freshman year of college. Uh, this capstone program really represents our commitment uh, to preparing our young women for university level um, coursework. Uh, just a quick story about one of our students, um, Nicole, who graduated in 2016. Uh, through the research program, she was actually able to uh, combine um, a topic that was really personal for her in, in her research project. Um, so she actually went on um, to create a dual major at Scripps College in biology and Asian American studies. Uh, and that was all um, thanks to what she learned um, in, in her research program. At Florida Sacred Heart, it, it really isn't about fitting a mold um, or striving to look or act in any, any way. It's really for each girl to understand and love her true self. Uh, whatever they want to be, uh, we are here to help ignite um, their dreams. So if you want to learn more about Flint Ridge Sacred Heart, uh, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out. And with that, I will pass it on to Jeremy. 
Thank you, Tracy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jeremy Clark. I'm the director of admissions at St. Stanislaus High School. St. Stanislaus is a Catholic all boys day and boarding school for young men in grades seven through 12. We are located in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi on the beautiful Mississippi Gulf Coast. We're a short 45 minute drive from New Orleans, Louisiana and about an hour west of Mobile, Alabama. The mission of St. Stanislaus is to form each of our students to gospel values by nurturing his spiritual, academic and physical growth in a place of sanctuary structured to embody the charism of the Brothers of the Sacred Heart. As an integral part of our mission, we maintain a boarding program that offers students opportunities for educational set success and personal growth within a disciplined and structured environment. At St. Stanislaus, we work with each young man to help him reach his full potential with a focus on religious values, discipline, personal attention, quality athletic and extracurricular activities, and of course, academic excellence. As a result of our emphasis on holistic education, it is our expectation that our, graduate, that our graduates leave us as well-rounded young men who recognize the need to continue their own spiritual, emotional, social, intellectual, and physical growth. Who have developed self-discipline that guides their actions, who nurture positive relationships and build community, who are intellectually curious and prepared to meet the academic demands of college, and who most importantly, leave us with a strong belief that God loves them. I invite you to explore our website, give us a call or pay a visit to our campus so that you can learn more about all that St. Stanislaus has to offer. At this time, Tracy and I will share with you some of the many ways a boarding school experience can help prepare your student for college life. High school boarding schools have much to offer students, from their strong academics to their diverse social life. The boarding school setting presents numerous opportunities for students to study and grow up in an environment designed to prepare them for college life. In both academic and non-academic aspects, boarding schools prepare students for the challenges, obstacles, and demands of life after high school. College courses can be incredibly challenging and many students are not properly prepared for this. However, high school boarding schools are known for having high standards and extraordinary academic expectations, and their students are better prepared for the high caliber college curriculum. In a recent survey from the Association of Boarding Schools, 87% of high school boarding students reported that they were well prepared for college academically, compared to only 71% of private day school students and 31% of public school students. Beyond the academics, students must also be prepared to face the social, emotional, and psychological challenges that await them in college. They must learn how to think and act independently of their parents. They must learn time management and personal accountability, all things that former boarding school students have been doing for years before they get to college. In the same survey by the Association of Boarding Schools, 78% of high school boarding students said that they were very well prepared for the non-academic aspects of college life, compared to only 36% of private day school students and 23% of their public school counterparts. And once again, to highlight the separation between the college readiness of former high school boarding students, the same survey indicated that 50% of them attained advanced degrees compared to only 36% of private day school students and 21% of public school students. Tracy will now present some additional information on the advantages that boarding school can provide students as they prepare for college. Thank you. Um, so like Jeremy just mentioned, you know, this data really shows that boarding school environment provides students with the tools to be successful. Um, boarding schools are really helping develop talents and interests of students and help them realize their individual educational goals in high school, but really helping them to prepare for college and beyond. 70% uh, of boarding school students say that their experience at the boarding school or a boarding school has helped them develop self-discipline, maturity, independence, and the ability to think critically all important skills to have as they enter um, university life. 
Um, and part of that is because our students are in an environment that gives them that opportunity to learn how to become disciplined and self-sufficient individuals. Uh, they are really learning the importance of being responsible for their own actions and gain essential independent living skills. Um, like Jeremy mentioned, they've learned how to manage their time, their budget, choose what they want to partake in, and a lot more. Uh, so really, by the time that they reach college, um, they're good to go and, and really don't have um, too much of a, a big of a learning curve um, to be college ready. Um, one of the other myths that we tend to hear as well is that um, students at boarding schools don't have fun. Uh, they are only there to be disciplined, uh, but the reality is that boarding schools give students ample opportunities to explore their interests, but with less distractions. Uh, this environment that they're in really allows students to fully discover uh, their talents, their strengths, and, and really what their skills are. Um, and most boarding schools have a residential life curriculum that is designed to, to nurture the lives of their students. There is you know, a big focus on community, education, awareness, and, and leadership. Um, so that's all I have for college readiness um, when it comes to boarding school. So with that, I will turn it over to Tom. Thank you very much, Tracy. Um, hello again. So once again, my name is Tom Malazuski. I'm the Director of Admissions at Mount Michael Benedictine School. Um, Mount Michael is located in Elkhorn, Nebraska, which is really smack dab right in the middle of the United States, um, you know, from the downtown airport in Omaha, Nebraska. It's about a 25 minute drive um, to Mount Michael's campus. Um, Mount Michael is a, a Catholic all boys school rooted in the five Benedictine values of community, hospitality, integrity, service and moderation. Um, so whether it be, you know, on the football field or in the dorms or within the classroom, you know, that's the biggest takeaway from a Mount Michael education. And, and I'm an alum of, of Mount Michael myself graduating in 2013 is um, that all students leave Mount Michael um, as well-rounded individuals, specifically with having strong foundations in, in those five Benedictine values. Um, the mission of Mount Michael is to develop students um, spiritually, intellectually, and socially with the end goal that one day they will become future leaders um, in their community. Uh, some of the high points at Mount Michael right now are, um, are high ACT scores. The average ACT score in the United States is about a 21. Um, and over the last five years, um, the average ACT at Mount Michael has been um, about a 29. Um, in addition to that, we also pride ourselves in having um, strong faculty involvement in our students' lives outside of the classroom. So about two thirds of our faculty are involved in, in either coaching sports or running clubs or um, engaged in any other student activity, whether that be trap shooting or journalism or robotics. Um, we have a high level of faculty involvement in addition to that. And, um, you know, in that same breath, another thing that we pride ourselves on is um, having a lot of alums such as myself that choose to come back to Mount Michael and give back, whether they, that means, um, you know, being an assistant coach in any of the athletic programs or teaching a class or getting involved in some of our junior night um, programs as well. So on your screen right now, you can see some of the high points of Mount Michael. I'm not gonna go through every single one of those, um, but I do invite you all to, to go visit our website at mountmichael.com or visit some of our social media um, pages. You can see that at the bottom of your screen as well. So um, I do look forward to, to speaking with you in further detail about the Mount. And with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Helene at the Academy of the Sacred Heart. I apologize. There you go. Uh, my name is Hélène. I uh, assist our director of admissions at the Academy of the Sacred Heart. We are in South Louisiana. Uh, the name Grand Couture might not ring a bell. We are between Houston and New Orleans. Um, but we, I would say we have the best of both worlds because our regional airport is connected to five big airports. So, you know, we're just a short hop from um, all major attractions. Um, the name Sacred Heart, however, might ring a bell. We're part of the Society of the Sacred Heart Schools, uh, which are shaped by the mission of Sacred Heart, the Sacred Heart Education, which is articulated by five goals, faith, intellectual values, social justice, uh, community building and, you know, the idea of making wise choices. Um, our founders, Madeline Sophie Barr, 
um, established this vision that is shared by all 24 schools of Sacred Hearts, uh, which are located in the United States. And we can go abroad. Uh, we have uh, a network of schools of about 150 schools in 40 countries, uh, which actually enables relationship, close relationships with those schools and um, a very active um, exchange program between our students. Uh, we actually happen to be the oldest of the Sacred Heart schools. We're about to celebrate our 200th anniversary. Um, we are a college prep uh, from kindergarten through 12th grade, and we are um, single gender. Uh, we, with all the benefits backed up by research, we only teach young women. Um, Sacred Heart schools are known for um, having a lot of traditions, uh, but that does not prevent us from being innovative. Um, our teachers and our curriculum director really strive to create um, a student-led um, curriculum, um, you know, that uses Socratic questioning, um, uh, project-based learning. Um, we really try to give um, all the tools and the opportunities to um, our students to for them to understand what their talents are, what makes them unique and what their call uh, is going to be, what their purpose is. Um, the girls, I would say, are competitive, but it's put to good use. Um, they're competitive with a kind spirit. Um, our campus is fairly big. We have about 255 acres, which I like to call, um, you know, the very, I guess, romantic southern, you know, uh, type of flair. Um, all sports are offered. Um, obviously, tons of opportunities for you to spend time outdoors and have like a, what we call outdoor recreational activities. I would say one of the unique things about our campus is that we also host um, horses. We have about 30 on campus and our equestrian program offers all levels of hunter jumpers, uh, even Western riding, if that's what um, you're interested in. Um, our boarding school called Boro Hall, um, also has been open for about 200 years, um, has a very diverse makeup of students. Uh, we like to tell that we've had about eight nationalities represented um, throughout the year, we're steady without mentioning all the influx of exchange students who come from you know, different Sacred Heart schools for like short periods of time. Um, let's see, we, um, we, uh, yeah, please check out our website. <laughs> and um, I think now I'm going to tell you about um, a day in the boarding school with um, Tom. So when you join a boarding school, um, you join a whole community and I guess a whole group of people. Um, and we often think about students, but the, really the makeup of your community is going to be all kinds of people who are going to cross your path and contribute to your growth. Um, it can be faculty staff, it can be prefects, it can be whoever, coaches, um, and all of them will contribute to um, you know, making you, I guess, a better person. Um, I guess one of the strengths of boarding school as well, just like I was pointing out from my school in particular, but that really applies to all boarding schools. You have people, um, students from um, all over the world who come and attend. Um, you have people also from out of state. I think sometimes we think about the cultural empathy, um, you know, that you get to develop in a boarding school. Um, that goes also for people from out of state, you know, whether you live on the East Coast, the West Coast or the mi Midwest, you also have those, you know, obviously cultural differences. Um, you, um, you have also, I guess, diversity uh, in terms of socioeconomics, racial diversity and people from um, all walks of life. They all end up on campus and living with you. And that's really a special way to grow. Um, you also learn about obviously traditions, cultures, uh, but you also are able to enrich your vision. You're able to use someone else's lens to, to view the same and analyze the same issues or aspects of life that come your way. Um, in terms of like, um, you know, um, supervision, if I can say that. Um, you have different profiles for different campuses, but obviously you'll have faculty members living on campus. Uh, some boarding schools use house parents, uh, prefects, and they're all the ones that will help you, you know, bring that structure. And they're the people who will be here for you for whatever you need, whether it's tutoring, uh, whether it's like 
you didn't have such a great day and you need to talk. Um, it could be also like if you have to discuss things, big decisions, uh, you know, you can get obviously always the input of your classmates, of your roommates, obviously all the uh, adults around you. Um, would you like to add anything, Tom? <laughs> no, I, you know, one thing I think that is, is kind of a common theme, you know, throughout this presentation is, is the college prep as side of, of Catholic boarding schools. And when we say college prep, I would say that it's not something that is specific to academics. And for, and for all the reasons that, that Helene just mentioned, as well as um, some of the other reasons that we'll get into is, you know, college prep extends beyond academics in terms of, you know, you are literally, you know, living away from home. You're learning, you're developing skills, life skills that you'll take on um, beyond high school, beyond college, things like accountability, self-discipline, you know, you'll learn how to become a self-advocate for yourself because you will be living on your own within a dorm, but in everything that you do, you will have people around you, as Helene said, to help guide you through that. Um, you know, you will be developing individually, but within the dorm, you know, and in, in your class, you know, that's something that you grow as a group. And, and part of that is, is something that is extremely beneficial. And it certainly helps our students by the time they get on into college, you know, they have already been there, done that in terms of how to live within a dorm and, and how to live within that community. So. Um, I would say when the bell rings, um, you know, once your classes are over, the, the excitement and the fun continues. Um, when you live on a, on a in a boarding school, you have tons of opportunities even after the school day ends. Um, obviously, we think about sports. Um, pretty much all sports are offered. And I would say the beauty of this is that uh, we often have students who tell us that if had they not gone to boarding school, they might not have opened up to uh, sports or like activities um, had they not come to boarding school. Um, I'm thinking also like, you know, uh, our students like to create clubs. Uh, it can be pretty much anything and everything. Um, same thing, you get to build community, learn new uh, tricks as, you know. Um, another way, obviously, because since you are, will be uh, in a Catholic school is that um, our mission is also to serve others. And a lot of boarding school also make available um, community outreach. And so we've often had, we either have opportunities that, you know, uh, come to us where obviously um, the prefects or the, the faculty will make available, but you also have opportunities to actually re, um, reach out and we have students will say, you know what, I've noticed this about this community or I've noticed like such a group of people could use our help there. And so they'll by themselves come up with a plan and we'll give them the resources and the tools, um, you know, and they'll be obviously able to make a difference. Um, What's also um, available on campus after school hours is tutoring, academic support. Um, you don't need to like obviously drive um, all over the place to you know and waste time uh, you know in traffic or commuting. Everything is usually on campus, whether it comes for private classes or study hall. Um, I would say one of the other um, rich aspect of going to a Catholic boarding school is that we have places to worship and pray. Um, and uh, when our students graduate and then when our alums come visit, it's something that often come back in the conversations that time for community prayer, that time to recenter um, as a group, uh, or just that time to be alone and you be able to pray. Um, they often miss that. They, they, this is something that they realize they had on campus, they had taken for granted, and that really uh, cherished. I think Tom is yeah. be about the weekends. And, uh, you know, a, a common question, a question that we get quite a bit at, at boarding schools are, you know, what goes on during the weekends? Is it is a structure typically similar to that of, of a midweek or, you know, do, do schedules typically differ on the weekends? And, you know, every, obviously every single school is different. But one thing that I think, um, you know, should be said is, is for the most part, schedules are, are very different on the weekends. You know, it's a lot more relaxed, if you will. Um, students still need to check in at certain times during the day. Um, they need to touch base with their weekend deans or their weekend prefects, the ones that are on campus um, in charge in case anything were to happen. Um, you know, but for, for so many students, especially at boarding schools, you know, they're obviously coming to school to get that education but they're also looking to get that, that cultural experience. And so on the weekends is typically when a lot of that happens to get the, get the kids off campus to go experience the cities that they are located in. Um, so, you know, more often than not, a lot of students um, at these schools will, will organize trips where they can go to a local store to, 
you know, you know, go to a local mall, they'll go out to dinner, they'll go out to see a movie. Um, you know, I recently took a group of our international students to a local Top Golf and and showed them, you know, how to how to play golf a little bit. So, you know, there are certain fun aspects that go on during the weekends, and then of course. Um, for some of the local students, more often than not, a lot of them will often invite students to their homes on the weekends um, and welcome them. So, um, you know, that cultural aspect is definitely a very vital component in, in you know, deciding where to attend a school and, and why to attend that school. So, you know, as you look at whatever schools you may be interested in, I would definitely, you know, seek out more information about, you know, what exactly do your weekends look like in addition to what do your weekdays look like? So with that being said, I'm going to transition it over to Mark over at Chaminade. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Butchinski, and I'm the Director of Resident Admissions at Chaminade College Preparatory School. Chaminade College Preparatory School is a school for young men in grades 6 through 12. We offer boarding in all grades, and we have been open here on our same campus since 1910. You know, as we talked about, you know, Chaminade is also a preparatory school, college preparatory school. And we try to really hold strict to that name on how we uh, work with our young men here at school. Um, we do say that we offer, you know, challenging, rigorous, you know, excellent academic courses. But with that, we also offer a lot of support from our academic resource center to our after school study labs and, and everything in between. One of our um, big programs that we offer here that uh, we feel is kind of, you know, something that we really like to share is our dual credit program. Chaminade offers 28 advanced placement courses, as well as 110 dual university credit courses. Our students routinely graduate with two years of university already complete. But while our academics are great, we, we're experts at teaching young men with diverse learning styles, you know, with competition, small group learning, and you know, academics always comes first. We wanna make sure that our boys are getting involved outside of the classroom as well. So with 40 different clubs and 19 sports available with over 70 different teams, most are no cut, you know, 95% of our students are involved with extracurricular activities. We like to do that, you know, for our boys just to, you know, have fun, make friends, but also competitively, we have some very strong teams and act, um, activities that, that not only do well here locally, but also statewide and nationwide. So if, if you're looking for a school where you can work hard in the classroom and play hard on the field, I think Chaminade might be someplace you'd like to look at. So feel free to contact me via email, telephone, through our website, or any of our social media platforms, and I'd be happy to talk with you. Next, I'd like to go ahead and let um, JD tell you a little bit about his school. Uh, he hello, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is JD Rogers. Uh, I am the Director of Admission at uh, Marianapolis. Uh, we are uh, 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 co-educational boarding and day school uh, located in uh, Thompson, Connecticut. Uh, as you see there, that is in the very northeastern corner of the state. Uh, it is about one hour outside of Boston, uh, Massachusetts, and about three hours north and east of New York City. I would like to say that we uh, have the best of both worlds. We're in a very rural, uh, um, you know, beautiful forested area, uh, about 200 acres that we're able to, to utilize, um, can be up and skiing in about 90 minutes, or you can be at the beach uh, and, and going, um, you know, swimming or surfing or sailing in about 45 minutes. And we really utilize uh, that location to the, the benefit of our, our students. Uh, we have 350 students from across the United States and uh, 21 countries worldwide, uh, in addition to the United States, so a very global and diverse community. Um, we uh, have uh, an average class size of 12, um, and you can see uh, there that we do challenge our students with, with 22 AP courses, uh, but we always want to empower them uh, and, and offer them, you know, the, the ability to choose and what their academic experience and direction will be, uh, so we have over 100 elective courses. Um, uh, we uh, very much uh, want our students to be involved uh, and engaged in our community. You can see also over 40 clubs and organizations, uh, over 40 athletic teams uh, across 18 competitive sports. Um, and so students, uh, there is, uh, you know, something for everyone. 
Uh, learning by doing is, is really the hallmark of a Marianapolis education. Uh, so we have signature programs that are really gonna get students uh, out of the classroom, off campus. Um, you can see there a program called Centers of Excellence that uh, is really you know, like a college minor uh, or, or even major where they're focusing on a certain area of study um, in their classes, in their electives, and then getting to really apply what they're learning by uh, having an internship their junior year. And again, getting that real world experience. Um, and then uh, our uh, LEAP Week is a, is a project-based, a cultural immersion-based program. Uh, it always happens uh, the week before spring break in March, uh, and it takes kids uh, across the country and can be anything uh, from, you know, uh, science-based courses and, and studying and working with sea turtles uh, for a week off the coast of Georgia um, to, uh, you know, learning about the film industry out in Los Angeles. Uh, so again, um, really uh, having that chance to um, experience what it is they're learning in the classroom and, and again what they want to pursue. Um, like all of my, my colleagues and their wonderful institutions, you know, we, we know that, uh, you know, college and university pursuit is, is very important. Uh, we do have 100% college acceptance um, with, you know, an extremely diverse uh, college placement list from Ivy's uh, down to some of the best Catholic uh, institutions in the U.S. and state schools, program specific like Berkeley College of Music or Rhode Island School of Design. Um, but most importantly is that it's a very thorough and comprehensive process that begins in ninth grade uh, for, for even our youngest students. So having those initial meetings. Um, so I, I think with that, uh, that's just a little bit uh, about Marianapolis. I'd be very uh, excited and uh, eager to, to speak with uh, you and tell you a little bit more. Um, and, and so we'll certainly share some contact info and, and look forward to, to speaking with you in the future. And I think uh, with, with that, we'll, we'll, uh, Mark and I are going to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, though we are Catholic institutions, that of course uh, our schools are made up of many uh, students and, and community members who are not Catholic. Uh, so. Very good. Thank you, JD. So, yes, we are a Catholic boarding school association. Every member who's here today is talking to you from a Catholic boarding school. We have many other members who are not here with you today, and we are all from great Catholic boarding schools. But that doesn't mean all of our students here on campus are Catholic. You know, you can see by this quick chart that the, the trend of non-Catholic student enrollments at Catholic schools over the last 20 years has been growing almost exponentially. I think that there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and I, what we'll talk about in our next slide will really show how we support our non-Catholic families on campus. So something that was touched upon a little bit on, you know, life, you know, a day in the life of a boarding school student was talking about service work, service learning, volunteer work, helping others. I think that community service is a great thing for anyone, Catholic or not. You know, community service is a tenet of the Catholicism, and that's also very big at all of our schools. Some of our schools will make, you know, service requirements for graduation. Others will have student-centered clubs that help our students to go out into the community, clean up parks, help the less fortunate, even sometimes clean up our own schools. But, you know, it's a really good way to work together and to really help others and to bring our students together another team, you know, another way where they're working hand in hand. Then next, to really, you know, add on, we, we already had a quick presentation about why boarding school students are more prepared for university life. But there's studies that show that Catholic school and specifically Catholic boarding school students are even more prepared for those, those rigors of university. Um, a lot of this, you know, has to do with the family atmosphere that we have, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, but we, we really try to make sure that our students feel accepted and are doing well here on our campuses, which in turn gives them the confidence to do well and moving on into university, they're, they're more prepared than just about any other students out there. So you're not Catholic, maybe Christian, maybe not. Will you have to study theology classes, religion classes? Yes, at most of our schools, that will be a requirement. You know, there's, there's you know, most of the classes that we have here aren't going to be, you know, drilling Catholicism into our students, you know, if you're not Catholic, but we really like to show the history of the Catholic Church, which has really helped to shape the world in which we live. You know, a lot of our classes that are fall under that theology or religion, you know, curriculum actually deal with a lot more than just Catholic courses. You know, we have a class here called Interreligious Issues, 
where our students will study five major world religions, Catholicism, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism, not to learn which is better, which is worse, which is right, or which is wrong, but just to compare and contrast and see the similarities and differences. And it really helps open up our, all of our students' worldviews. So with that, I'd like to have JD speak a little bit more on a few other ways that we really do support our non-Catholic students here at Catholic boarding schools. Absolutely, and, and thank you, Mark. And, and I think as we, we look at moral values, uh, that, that is truly the, the foundation of, of you know, Catholic boarding schools. Uh, but of course, that, that does not matter uh, whether you are Catholic or not. And uh, as, as families really seek to have uh, you know, the, the ethical and, and um, you know, good, well-behaved uh, students who are uh, going to be taught discipline, uh, yet open-mindedness, um, that uh, really they, they look at that as, as a faith-based education. Um, and this is going to be taught in our curriculum. Um, you know, Mark was speaking to some of the, uh, you know, courses that are in our schools. Uh, you know, we, we also have um, those types of courses that are going to uh, examine uh, these as well. So, you know, things like social justice or, you know, uh, what's going on in the world today and, and how does faith and spirituality play a role in that. Um, and, and that truly helps to, you know, get them to, to build or develop um, and reinforce, um, you know, the, those worldviews and, and perspectives and, uh, you know, with the uh, main goal of that, uh, everyone is, is treating one another with those morals and values and ethics um, that we expect uh, of, of all community members and, and how they're treating their peers, their teachers, you know, the guests that come to campus. Um, but, but really these morals and values are, are what's at the, the heart of, of the Catholic boarding school education and what is you know, both examined and taught in classes or also you know, participated in and experienced through clubs and organizations, of course, through our services, but that you know, certainly that this isn't just for our Catholic students, that this is for all of our students you know, that, that are represented uh, from all over the country, all over the globe, and of course, with different faiths uh, and backgrounds. Um, and, and of course, uh, you know, a good seg and leading into uh, just sort of that, that family, um, you know, feeling and, and, and community, again, I, I do believe is, um, you know, what separates uh, Catholic boarding schools and that uh, our, our students are, are getting to live this every day, um, uh, you know, that they, uh, have the opportunity to uh, participate in, in retreats, again, whether they're Catholic or not, that it is just a, a way for students to, to get to know one another, to reflect, um, to, to share their, their opinions and their own worldviews. Um, and just that uh, this is, you know, what they're able to do uh, uh, every day by, by living on campus and, uh, you know, living with uh, uh, and, and learning with uh, students who are like-minded and, and really looking to, to grow, um, not just as students, but as individuals, as community members, uh, as global citizens. Um, and that really ha you know, has them come together and, and feeling like a tight-knit community. Uh, of course, you know, the, you know, we, we like to say at our, our schools, you know, in loco parentis, that we are, are of course, uh, in lieu of parents, you know, our students living away from home. Um, and so the idea of the, you know, the, the tight knit relationships that um, our students have with their teachers as well. Um, you know, they have uh, much access to them through our advisory programs and, you know, through our office hours. Um, but also, of course, that our teachers are their coaches and their dorm parents as well. So these, um, you know, those, those bonds, you know, do become, uh, you know, you know, the, the, those relationships uh, and the adults in our students' lives become true confidants and, and someone that they, they very much trust in and look for guidance. Uh, and, and all of that just, just you know, uh, builds that community feeling um, and it's something that we're all very proud of. Uh, and then, of course, uh, as has been mentioned, this, this really does extend uh, to the entire globe. Uh, you know, we, all of our schools are, are represented by wonderful nations and uh, cultures uh, across the globe. Um, and, and just that, you know, the, the thinking of, you know, the, you know, Catholic with, uh, with a small C is actually, you know, derived from a word uh, that, that means universal and inclusive. And, and so our schools really do exhibit that by welcoming students from, from all over the, um, the world um, and that our students get to learn from one another. And, 
And so for, for students who might not be Catholic, of course, they're, they're imparting and, and teaching uh, other students about their faiths and about their cultures. Um, and I think what, what we love to see as well is, is that, you, you know, in our uh, campus ministries, um, in, in our services, you know, you, you'll, you'll see students who might not be Catholic participating in those. And, and again, just, just really exploring uh, their, own, their faith and spirituality and where they are in their own journeys. Um, and again, that is just something that, that makes our uh, communities, our schools uh, so diverse, uh, so unique. And um, I think, you know, just uh, an educational, uh, you know, experience that, uh, you know, we like to say is certainly a life experience, uh, not just a, an academic one. Um, so uh, I think if it, uh, Mark doesn't have uh, anything else uh, to add, I, I think we are good to, to move on. Uh, and I believe it's uh, Anne who's going to hop in. Hello, uh, my name is Ann Fawcett and I am the Director of Admission at Marhill Mount Academy. We are um, a school located just in Atchison, Kansas, uh, so right in the middle of the country, uh, close to Kansas City, so go Chiefs, the Super Bowl's on Sunday. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Um, we're Order of St. Benedict and we were founded in 1863. Our school is on the smaller side, about 200 students over four grades, nine through 12, and we are co-ed, so we take boys and girls. About 40% of our students are boarding and 60% of our students are from the local area uh, day students. This year we have students from all across the country and then about 10 countries. Uh, so a little bit lower on the international side, usually we have upwards of about 15 countries represented on campus. We have been in person this entire time. So we've been really excited about that. That we've been able to stay, stay safe and healthy. Um, and, uh, you know, keeping the kids, you know, active. We even have basketball games going on right now. Uh, we have college prep academics, like most of uh, the other boarding schools here. We have advanced placement, and then also some honors and dual credit courses with the local university here in town. Um, for those of you who English is not your first language and may need some extra help, uh, we actually do have an English as a second language program. And, the requirements for that program are all listed on our website. Uh, we have quite a few different extracurricular activities, um, athletics, clubs, performing arts. Uh, we do require new boarding students to actually start right away in some sort of activity just to get them integrated into the campus and meeting new students and making new friends right away. Um, but it's a it's a nice, safe, quiet area We're close again to Kansas City so that that's where students fly in and out of. And um, also we go down there for the weekends as well. And with that, I'll pass it on to Tyler. Hello everyone, my name is Tyler Hart. I'm the Director of Admission at Villanova Preparatory School. Been here now for 15 years, started as a math teacher. I'm a Villanova parent of one graduate and one current freshman. Villanova Preparatory School was founded in 1924. Uh, we are a Catholic day and boarding high school in the Augustinian tradition. We seek to educate mature young adults of diverse backgrounds. We are located in Ojai, California, a valley in the hills about 15 minutes from Ventura Beach and 90 minutes north of Los Angeles. Villanova is a Catholic school in the Augustinian tradition, just like Villanova University. About 50% of our student body is Catholic. We have mass together as a school one to two times a month. And St. Augustine is well known in the world of philosophy. He professed three core values of unity, truth, and love. I encourage you to Google St. Augustine quotes for some real gems of wisdom. We are co-ed with 200 students in our school. One third of our students are boarding. We have students from throughout California and 15 countries internationally. Students are enveloped in care by mentors, resident staff, teachers, coaches, classmates, teammates, the list goes on. We are an IB world school and the only boarding school in California offering the IB diploma program. We are also the only high school in the country offering the Claire Booth Loose program, a female math and science initiative led by our female teachers for our female students who are interested in STEM. They connect with female professors, engineers, and scientists throughout California. And oftentimes I'm asked, why do I work at Villanova? Well, it's because our students work hard and play hard. They are happy and they know that they are well supported. Every day with our students is an adventure and a blessing. 
They truly do bond together through wins and losses on the field. They rely on each other in study groups and they open up during overnight class retreats. Students know and come to appreciate that their teachers take care of them. I'd now like to pass it back to Anne to talk a little bit about the admissions process into our schools. Yeah, so hopefully now you have kind of taken a look at some of the, the boarding schools here and then also looked at application process and admission process. It is always important to make sure that you look at each individual school's admission process because it can vary. Um, but overall, you'll find some things in common. Most of us have our own school application online and then use the standard application online that's through the SSAT. Um, if you see deadlines, then that means that the school does have deadlines. You need to watch for that. If you see the term rolling admission, that means that the school does continuously enroll students throughout the year and process applications throughout the year. So always make sure to ask. Most of the schools are always going to ask for transcripts and grades of your current year and then previous two years. So be prepared to provide uh, those to the school. And then if you are coming from outside the US, make sure that those have been translated into English if they are not. Letters of recommendation uh, we want from your teachers or your principal or your counselor. It varies on how many are required and if we have our own form or if we want those people to just submit a letter directly to the school. And then again, if you are outside the United States or maybe English is not your first language, an English profession an English proficiency test could be required. Most of us do accept a wide range of these exams, TOEFL, TOEFL Junior, Duolingo, IELTS, Cambridge, et cetera. Um, so just make sure to ask those questions, what is required of the school and then the level. The SSAT test, which is the test for entering into high school uh, can be required or optional depending on the school. And then as always, all of us do have a student and parent interview. And this is the chance to really get to know you, ask questions, you, we want you to ask questions of us um, and make sure that you're the best fit. So, but most importantly, always ask questions of the admission officer. So any one of us at our schools, because it can vary um, the process depending on each school. Thanks, Ann. Uh, let's talk about money. Tuition is expensive. It is worth it and it is within reach. Students, we all have our part. You have a responsibility to make the most of your opportunities, to try your hardest in school, to give it your all, and join in the many fantastic opportunities that you've begun to hear about today. Tuition is not something you need to worry about. It is for your parents. If you are striving to reach your potential, seeking help and assisting others, and you remember to say thank you now and then, consider your responsibility covered. Parents, I know you are thinking about the elephant in the room, and perhaps you are thinking one of the following. I can afford this, and I see the great value. I think I can afford this, but not in one lump sum. If I can send, set up some sort of tuition plan, then I think we can swing this, and I see the value or this is completely out of reach. In no way, shape or form could I afford this, but I see the value. This slide here encompasses all of the possible expenses. Every school is unique in their pricing and also in the extracurricular activities and programs that they offer and some of those that cost money. If you schedule a 15 minute conversation with any of our schools, you will have a far more clear understanding of financially the expectation. Now, tuition assistance is available. Let's talk about language and vocabulary, specifically financial aid versus scholarships. Financial aid is need-based. If you cannot afford tuition, then you should apply for financial aid. Tax returns and other financial documents, an online form through either SSS, FAST, or FAX, and perhaps even a monthly budget are some of the many items that schools use to determine a family's need. And let's remember, Financial aid is meant to make attending school possible, which is far different than comfortable. It takes investment and at times sacrifice. This is an invaluable opportunity for your child. It is a process, but it is a healthy exercise. All of our schools offer need-based financial aid. Scholarships are earned by a student because they show promise in a particular area. Are you amazing at something? 
Did you earn a top score on the SSAT or some other entrance exam? Are you an accomplished musician or a published author? Some, not all, of our schools offer scholarships, and it's up to you to research on each of our websites about potential scholarships. The most popular scholarships that, pe that people think of are related to sports. Think college scholarships. My school is in California, and we are not allowed to offer sports scholarships, but other regions of the U.S. do. Again, make this part of your investigation as you are reviewing school websites and part of your conversation with a school representative. So now that you have all this information, what's next? So we always recommend that you connect with the schools directly, um, either through email or requesting maybe just a quick Zoom meeting Whatever it is, connect with us directly so that we can answer all of your questions and get to know you better. Follow our schools on social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, uh, see what's going on. See if this is the type of place that maybe you want your child to be or if you're a student, see if you can maybe fit in at our schools and, and we have the activities that you're looking for. Ask to connect with a student, parent, or teacher. We love connecting um, our parents with current parents. They love talking about our schools. Our teachers can talk about maybe different programs or areas of study, especially if you're looking for a school with maybe strong arts or STEM, um, or if you're trying to connect with a family within your area, your city or the country that you live in. Um, but they can be valuable um, resources and provide great information. And then apply. Right now, if you guys are looking to enter high school this fall, this is a great time to apply. We're all accepting applications at this time. And we do encourage you to try and finish the application process as soon as possible so that you can have your answer if you've been admitted, maybe you're applying for financial aid, um, and just you know get ready for the fall semester. And start preparing for that interview as part of the application. You know, Do your research. We want you to you know, look at the website, look at social media, ask a lot of questions, have questions ready for us. We always want to hear what you guys have to say. Um, and we always like to be stumped every once in a while. Um, but know your resume, know your strengths and share with us, you know, why do you want to come to our schools? Uh, because we want it to be the best fit for you and best fit for us. So with that, um, I think we'll ending the presentation. Um, and so we're going to take some questions. I didn't see any questions in the Q&A, but I know we had a couple submitted prior. Um, we had a lot of questions about gaming, video games or esports. wasn't quite sure. Um, Tyler, you said you've kind of covered this a few times. So if you want to take, you know, talk about gaming and maybe how it is in the dorms and uh, what, what the schools do as far as that. <laughs> Absolutely, Anne. So one of the big reasons why families are looking uh, to boarding school is really to provide uh, structure. And not only is the school day from eight to three, uh, but now it is kind of 24 hours if you think about it. You know, there are resident staff and faculty who are monitoring what the students are doing uh, after school with sports and other extracurricular activities. And of course there is free time weekend activities. You've heard all about that today. Uh, and gaming is something that students love to do. So there is time set aside uh, in the free time, but it is also oftentimes monitored. Uh, the internet at each of our schools is filtered. Uh, so if it feels like students are doing a little bit too much of one thing or another, we are often in conversation with parents, we will turn down the knobs, uh, so to speak. It is important from a community building standpoint that if students are engaging in online activities, that they're doing so more so in a group or in a common atmosphere as opposed to dark by themselves in their dorm rooms. But we also have begun to embrace the reality that uh, gaming is competitive. Uh, Esports is really something that is uh, taken this world by storm. And even at the high school level, uh, they are competing right alongside the soccer and football and basketball teams. There are esports competitions and there are seasons. In California, there is a fall season and a spring season where students can compete in League of Legends, Rocket League, and Smite. So it is a balancing act of ensuring that the students are practicing and preparing well for competition, 
but of course, really being mindful of their academics and uh, taking things in moderation. Mark, you have a pretty acclaimed uh, gaming esports team at your school, don't you? Yeah, actually, as you mentioned, um, over the last, you know, five plus years, we've seen, you know, gaming really become popular and sometimes it could be problematic, you know, taking up time for studies, people not, students not joining different sports or activities because they wanted to rush back to their room. So we decided to embrace that. And a few years ago, like, like many schools are starting to do now, um, we started an esports team. Um, similar games that you had mentioned, plus a few others, and um, really put some effort and even budget into it and opened our own esports center. Um, just really happy to say we've been doing very well. Um, this year, we started the year like 15 and 0 before we had our first loss, but that keeps us both uh, locally, um, statewide, and nationally ranked. And um, we've seen the guys, they come together, they really work as a team. It really has become another activity that provides our students, you know, another area where they can work together and really, really form bonds and friendships. So um, yeah, we, we took one, one thing that may have been looked at as a problem in the past and really turned it into a positive for our students. Thanks. Um, another question that came up was about partnerships. So I think it was probably someone overseas to see if we have any partnerships. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to touch on that. I know most of us, do probably have partnerships with uh, different types of consultants. Um, I know we do, and then even some high schools like short-term programs with us. Um, Mark, did you want to talk about Perfect. that? Perfect. Yeah, no, I think that uh, many of our schools, you know, while we, you know, work with, you know, local students, we have students from all over the country, we have students from all around the world. A lot of those have been formed through partnerships, whether that be with what some schools are called feeder schools, you know, schools that have maybe an elementary or um, middle school program that feed into high schools. Or I know we talked a little bit earlier about the Sacred Heart School Connection. That is a worldwide, you know, group of schools that allows students to travel and visit, you know, between those schools for many different reasons. Um, you know, even at Chaminade, we have a Marianist school connection with schools in, I think, 32 different countries. And we offer a global academy that keeps us all connected, whether that's virtually or in person through, through travel and spring break trips, etc. But also one of the ways that we work to find great new students, both domestically and around the world, is forming partnerships with, with international schools, with um, education consultants and companies that that do this for a living. You know, we can travel in most years, but we can only be out of our offices for so long. So working with great partners around the world with boots on the ground that can help us to meet um, great students is something that I think all of our schools are willing to discuss and are currently doing or maybe doing soon. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, well, with that, you know, we're kind of, we're pretty much out of time. So uh, I'll let Tyler wrap it up, end it, any last words? All right, well, thank you very much, Ann. Uh, and from my colleagues across membership of CBSA, thank you very much, attendees, for joining us today. You will receive a follow-up email containing the contact information for each of the representatives on this webinar today. And with that, have a wonderful evening, and thank you very much for considering Catholic boarding schools. Take care, everybody.